Driving in traffic sucks. Going to busy gas stations where the gas is heavily taxed, <coughs> California, sucks. So having a car which makes those more bearable is definitely nice. But here's a few quick questions. Do you want to do a U-turn with just one finger? Get a RAV4. Want to have a trunk big enough to fit two humans or a big Costco haul? Get a RAV4. Want to relax a little more in traffic and have the car assist your driving? You guessed it, get a RAV4. The RAV4 gets a stamp of approval in my book for sure. But don't worry, not everything is sunshine and rainbows, and I'll tell you some of the things I didn't like in the week I spent with this car. Like when it didn't stop in time for the car right in front of us and scared the out of me. Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from shouldigetit.com, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid XSE all-wheel drive. Way behind me is the 405, also known as Hell on Earth, or a parking lot for those of you that live here in Los Angeles. And closer to me is the 2020 Toyota RAV4 XSE Hybrid with all-wheel drive. You might remember me from the video I did on the Toyota GT86, which is a really good looking and very fun weekend sports car, but daily driving it through an LA commute really sucks the fun out of that car and shows that LA unfortunately is not a place for car people, at least LA proper. The Valley is a little bit different. But anyways, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the creature comforts and convenience of having a car like this. The first thing I wanna mention is that brake hold is such a small feature, but I feel like it should be standard in every car. This car has it, it's really nice. It's like the opposite of cruise control. You turn it on and then whenever you come to a complete stop, the car holds the brake for you completely. So in LA, that's super helpful. You come to a red light, you're fully stopped. You can take your foot completely off the brake, let it hang out wherever. You can even sit cross-legged if you really wanted to. And then once the light turns green, you just tap the accelerator and the car continues to go. But it's getting a little bit cold out here and I've shot sexier B-roll than here with the 405 in the back. So let's move on to the voiceover and I hope you enjoy the video. We're gonna talk about how it looks, how it drives, and what it's like to live with. Let me just mention this is the most fuel efficient car I've ever reviewed on the channel, and it's an SUV. Toyota's paperwork says it gets an estimated 40 MPG, whereas I was getting 30, and I still think that's a pretty impressive number, but keep in mind I was mostly driving very short four to five mile trips around the city. And those numbers are approved by dogs everywhere. If you're on the fence trying to do the math deciding between the hybrid and the gas variant, don't even think about it. Go hybrid. You get a little bit more torque, you'll save that money on gas, and the cost difference is less than 1500 bucks. This more aggressive 5th generation RAV4 design came out in 2019, and 2020 is no different. It looks much more like it fits in with the Tacoma family than the Camry family, which I'm a big fan of for sure, and you'll notice some black contrasting touches on the outside like the black over the wheel wells on the sides, and black badges like the Toyota badge, the hybrid, all-wheel drive, etc. The cool thing for the hybrid, you'll notice that it has this kind of blue halo in the Toyota emblem on the trunk and in the front. That's how you can tell that it's a hybrid and that blue carries over into the interior as well. The interesting part is that the hybrid variant still has sporty looking dual exhaust tips on the back, except the car is so quiet that when you put it into reverse, it sounds like this. And they did that so when you back out of a spot, pedestrians don't get scared and think that you're going to run over them. And you won't because the backup camera has two angles that you can choose from. They work pretty well. It's also got those guiding lines and the parking sensors front and rear do work pretty well. You'll see a lot of blue stitching on the dash, on the side of the doors, and in the seats, but that blue doesn't carry over to the steering wheel stitching or the shifter. I understand it's not a sports car, but that would have been a nice addition. This one came with the carpet floor mat kit, so you have the RAV4 logo on the carpets and in the trunk. I think it looks pretty good. I believe all of them get the RAV4 side sill, and you'll notice that there is a lot of tactile feedback going on. So the radio still has physical buttons. It's got knobs on the side, even though the touchscreen works pretty well with Apple CarPlay as well. Heated seats is a switch that goes both up and down. So if you wanted, you could leave the heated seats on at night and then the next morning when you start the car, they're on already for you. Overall, I think it looks pretty good. Now let's talk about how it drives. 90% of the time I was driving the RAV4, felt really comfortable. It was like being in slippers and pajamas. 
Typically, I think of SUVs as being really heavy, and this one felt really easy to drive and nice and light. As you can see, driving it with one hand is very easy, making tight turns is no problem, and it never felt like it was going to tip over or become unstable. The ride is very soft, going over bumps and potholes isn't a huge dramatic deal like it is in some of the sportier cars I drive, and it is a very quiet ride. Except, when you put your foot down and you're trying to speed up a little bit faster, you'll hear it gets pretty loud in the cabin. fuel efficiency of a compact sedan, yet the size and convenience of a larger SUV, I could recommend the RAV4 Hybrid to a ton of people. Whether you're young and love going on road trips with your friends or just want a really cushy ride, this car is for you. If you have a family and you need to fit your dog and kids into this car, this car is for you. If you're a musician and you have to move amps and drum sets, this car is for you. And if you just want something fuel efficient that feels safe because it's bigger than a Prius, well again, this car is for you. There are very few things that I would say detract from the RAV4, and the ones that do are very nitpicky and not deal breakers. For instance, one of the things I didn't like was that the radar cruise control worked really well when traffic was all going at the same speed and kind of consistent, or was very heavy traffic and everyone was stopping and going together. The issue that I had was when I was going at a pretty decent pace, and then I would either hit a car that's fully stopped on the freeway or at a red light, and the RAV4 wouldn't see it from far enough away and would then just give me warning to slam on the brakes as I showed you in the intro of this video. The other thing is when closing the power lift gate, the button on the back only closes it but does not lock the car. I couldn't find a method around this, possibly if you double tap or tap and hold then it would close and lock, but I had to take my bags of groceries and hit the dimple on the side of the door or try and fumble for my key in my pocket and hit lock. That was just a very small gripe that I had. Overall, I think the RAV4 is fantastic for a lot of people. If you're on the fence and you have questions, leave them down in the comment below. If you own one and you sat through this video, thank you. I'm very curious as to why. So please comment your favorite and least favorite thing, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.